Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. It seems like Drake has finally responded to Kendrick, Future, Metro Boomin, and everybody else he's been beefing with because his disc record leaked and the disc record is called Push Ups, Drop and Give Me 50. Now I heard the song in its full entirety and the song is hard and the bars are crazy. We just gotta give it to him. He really did his big one with this. Now the question is, is this going to suffice because he's going up against a lot of rap guys right now and Kendrick is the wild card he could come at Drake at so many different angles and he could really violate so is this this song gonna hold up in the long run I don't know but I will say it is a good attempt on Drake's part and at least he responded <laughs> he responded in a way that J. Cole couldn't and I talked about J. Cole kind of pulling out and backtracking in another video. I had my own thoughts on that, so I needed to talk about that in a separate video. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on Drake's diss song and his beefs with some of these guys in the industry. Now, what triggered this whole fiasco? Well, Future and Metro Boomin dropped a project together called We Don't Trust You. And in the project, they were taking shots at Drake. They even recruited Kendrick Lamar on the song like that, and Kendrick dragged Drake also, they dropped another project called We Still Don't Trust You, and they even recruited ASAP Rocky and The Weeknd to come in and drag Drake. Rick Ross even got involved and sided with them against Drake. So several guys got together and started teaming up against Drake. I don't know if they had a meeting or an intervention where they were just talking about how Drake did them wrong, but they all came together and decided to come at Drake, and Future and Metro Boomin spearheaded this whole movement now just to kind of give some backstory it was rumored that future and the producer metro boomin were furious that drake flaked out on them because they were supposed to do another collaborative project but drake decided to work with 21 savage instead and they released her loss and future and metro boomin were upset about that because this was a business deal that fell through they could have made some money if they did another album together but Drake pulled out on it and right now they don't like him and there could be some other reasons why Future doesn't like Drake too because he alluded to it in his song We Don't Trust You he said you a N's number one fan dog sneak dissing I don't understand dog pillow talking acting like a fed dog I don't need another fake friend dog can't be about an O because we sharing dog in your feelings Igga why you playing dog so he referenced Drake's In Your Feelings song and his album For All The Dogs so that was a clear shot at him and Drake responded back in his song, Push Ups, Drop and Give Me 50. He said, I can never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You peas can't get booked outside of America for Nan. I'm out in Tokyo cause I'm big in Japan. I'm the hit maker y'all depend on. Now Drake didn't lie because technically some of Future's biggest hits are with Drake. Drake also came at the producer Metro Boomin and said, Metro, shut your HA up and make some drums. <laughs> Drake then came for the other guys who have been siding against him like Rick Ross. Rick unfollowed him and Drake being his petty self, invited his ex-girlfriend Christina to his show. And he also has some choice words for Rick in his diss song. He said, I might take your latest girl and cuff her like I'm Ricky. Can't believe he jumping in this end turning 50. Every song that made it on a chart, he got it from Drizzy. Worry about whatever you got going on with you and uh, Diddy. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he was alluding to, but it does rhyme. <laughs> now, Rick Ross did respond very quickly. It seemed like he had a diss record waiting for him in the vault and it's called Champagne Moments. And he dragged Drake and said he got a nose job and a fake six pack and he also called him a white boy. He also said he got Ghost Riders and he got the juice from Lil Wayne. Also, he revealed the real reason why he turned on Drake. He said, I unfollowed you, Igga, cause you sent the MF and cease and desist to French Montana, Igga. You sent the police, Igga, hating on my dog project. Now I didn't know about this, but Drake had two songs with French Montana, one called Big Pun and another one called Splash Brothers, but he prevented French from using his verses on his album Mac and Cheese 5. So Rick Ross thought that was corny, which is why he turned on Drake. But Rick Ross's baby mama, Tia Kemp, said that he has been hating on Drake on the low. And Drake, I want you to call me because I got something to tell you personally. He talk about your family, but any racist too. He, he talk about Drake like a dog. Oh, 
Girl, he got a baby from a Russian woman look just like Drake. Beautiful little boy. Same age, one of that girl got them three churn from, baby. Uh, but why last baby. would Rick Ross tell you break on Drake business, allegedly? Because he pillow talk with me every all through the night when he wants sandwiches and wake up. His sleep pattern out. <laughs> Tia Kemp is funny. She really is funny. But Rick Ross has been hating on Drake. I think he's been hating on him. And a lot of guys been hating on him too. Even though they run to him for features and hit songs, they all feel a way about him. And this is not to say that Drake is innocent because... I feel like he is very calculating and he does pull snake moves, but you can't deny that a lot of these guys have some secret jealousy when it comes to him. Drake also gave The Weeknd his lashings. Now, The Weeknd and Drake's history is interesting. It's a bit complicated, but it really stems from the fact that Drake wanted The Weeknd to be a permanent writer for him. He wanted to sign him to OVO Records, but The Weeknd didn't want to suffer the same fate that Party Next Door did. So he signed his own deal and Drake did kind of feel a way about it at one point. And also they were feuding over Bella Hadid. So you already know, anytime a woman is involved or money is involved, these guys take things more personally. So The Weeknd did come at Drake on Future and Metro Boomin's other album, We Still Don't Trust You. <laughs> and on the song All To Myself, The Weeknd said, they can never diss my brothers, baby, when they got leaks in their operation. I thank God I never signed my life away. And we don't do the big talk. No, no, no. Now, Drake responded by saying The Weeknd's manager, Cash XO, was blowing a lot of The Weeknd's money on other men. So he's robbing The Weeknd and tricking on other men. <laughs> also, he said, hugs and kisses, man. Don't talk about no switches. So he basically told The Weeknd, you ain't street. Your labels call XO, meaning hugs and kisses for crying out loud. So... <laughs> Drake is not even taking The Weeknd seriously. And The Weeknd seemed to be amused by Drake's diss track. I guess he felt like it was a joke because he posted this picture of him laughing on his IG story. Also, I feel like Drake took a shot at Travis Scott because Travis was out here hyping up Metro Boomin and Future at Rolling Loud. And he was begging them to play that diss track like that. And Drake saw it and he said, Rolling Loud stage, y'all were turned. That was slick as L. Ish probably changed if your BM start to kiss and tell. So I think Drake was alluding to messing with Travis Scott's baby mama, Kylie Jenner. Now I wanna get into everything Drake said about Kendrick because mostly this record was directed at Kendrick because Kendrick came at Drake on the song like that. Now, some people think that Kendrick came at Drake unprovoked, but there has been some tension brewing between these two for over a decade and they have been competing for that number one spot in hip hop. Now, in my opinion, they both are equally important for different reasons, but they don't wanna be seen as equals. They wanna be seen as the best. And Kendrick doesn't even like the idea of Drake even being compared to him. <laughs> he feels like Drake's artistry doesn't even measure up to his. And Drake does have some resentment towards Kendrick. I think he is a bit threatened because Kendrick is highly esteemed and he's more respected as a rapper, whereas Drake is kind of looked at as more of a pop artist and a poser. So Drake kind of feels a way about the respect that Kendrick gets over him. So I think it boils down to an ego thing and Drake and Kendrick have been throwing subs at each other for years. And Drake tried to play in Kendrick's face by linking up with J. Cole and doing the song First Person Shooter. And in the song, Drake was kind of taunting Kendrick and making it seem like he was an afterthought. He was like, it's me and J. Cole. We're the top two in the league. We made it to the Super Bowl. He intentionally excluded Kendrick, but J. Cole decided to include Kendrick by saying he's a part of the big three. But essentially, J. Cole was also saying that he's Muhammad Ali. He's the greatest of the three. So they all were boasting about how great they are. And I do think this song triggered Kendrick. I mean, they were trolling him. So this is why he responded the way he did in the song like that. And he came for Drake specifically. He said, I got two T's with me. I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos. It's up. So he's saying that he has his bodyguard with him and he's making threats towards Drake. He also said, mother F the big three, it's just big me. What, I'm really like that. And your best work is a light pack. Prince outlived Mike Jack, Igga Bum. For all your dogs getting buried, and that's K with all these nines, he gonna see Pet Cemetery. So that was a direct shot at Drake. He referenced 
Drake's album for all the dogs and said that he's gonna bury Drake. And also he said that he's gonna outlive Drake the way Prince outlived Michael Jackson. And I think he was more so speaking about his legacy outliving Drake's. And Drake came back at Kendrick and he smoked him. I don't care what nobody has to say. This diss track was super hard. First of all, he called the song push-ups, drop and give me 50. So he was making fun of the fact that Kendrick was doing push-ups on one of his burner accounts. And also he was poking fun at the fact that Kendrick had a horrible record deal. In fact, 50% of his music publishing went to his former label owner, Top Dog. So he's taunting him and saying, drop and give me 50 the way you gave Top Dog 50% of your publishing. He said, you won't ever take no chain off us. How the F you big stepping with a size seven men's on? This the bark with the bite, Igga, what's up? I know my picture on the wall when y'all cook up. Extortion, baby. Whole career you been shook up. Cause Top told you to drop and give me 50 like some push-ups. Uh, yo last one brick, you really not on ish. They make excuses for you cause they hate to see me lit. Pull your contract cause we gotta see the split. The way you doing splits be your pants might rip. Now you can't tell me this wasn't hard because he really went there. He went there and he also referenced Kendrick last album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers and said it wasn't all that great. And people only hype him up because they don't wanna give Drake his props. I thought that was a very, very interesting line. And it comes to show you that Drake definitely feels a way about the respect that Kendrick gets over him. But he continued to go in on Kendrick and said, Pip squeak pipe down. You ain't no big three. SZA got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. Like your label boy, you in a scope right now. Ooh, ooh, ooh that wordplay. And you gonna feel the aftermath of what I write down. I'm at the top of the mountain, so you tight now. And I like this line, he said, what's a prince to a king? He's a son, Igga. Get more love in the city that you're from, Igga. That was hard. <laughs> that was hard. I mean, it's true. I mean, Kendrick was comparing himself to Prince and comparing Drake to Michael Jackson. But at the end of the day, Michael Jackson is the king of pop. And what is a prince to a king? A son, literally. He sunned him. Drake also responded to the line about Kendrick and his bodyguard snatching his chains. He said, I be rocking every effing chain I own next visit A. I'd be with some bodyguards like Whitney. So he's not only referencing the movie, The Bodyguard, which starred Whitney Houston, but also it seems like he's alluding to Kendrick's wife, Whitney, being around some bodyguards. Now, I don't know if he's trying to insinuate that Whitney cheated on Kendrick with a bodyguard, but either way, him bringing up Kendrick's wife is gonna have some serious consequences. I think Kendrick is gonna try to end Drake. <laughs> Drake was also a little annoyed that J. Cole decided to backtrack. Now, J. Cole dropped a diss record towards Kendrick called Seven Minute Drill, and this was his response to Kendrick's verse on Like That. And I talked about it in another video, but J. Cole did remove the song, and he kind of issued an apology and said how bad he felt about releasing it. And a lot of people were clowning J. Cole for basically throwing in the towel. I mean, this was a moment for him to really prove that he is the best lyrical rapper of our generation. But he said, forget it. And he left Drake to fight the battle himself. So Drake was like, I don't care what Cole think. That dot ish was weak as F. He's letting it be known that he's not backing down from Kendrick the way J. Cole did. But yeah, I like Drake's response to Kendrick and I'm very interested to see what K-Dot has in store for Drake. I know Kendrick is gonna really violate him so bad. It's gonna honestly be like deja vu from the whole Pusha T thing. It's gonna be bad because there's so many different angles Kendrick could come at Drake with. But I have to give Drake his respect. I like the fact that he came with that energy. He not only came for Kendrick, but he came at everybody who has something to say about him. So even if Kendrick comes back and obliterates him, Drake still wouldn't be seen as a complete loser because he took on multiple guys by himself. But anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time. Bye.